Welcome to the Startup Showcase. I'm your host, Scott Katoon, and this is Technoid Live from WGN, where Chicago's top tech founders and entrepreneurs come to share their story. Sitting next to me is my friend Jackie Wu, uh, co-founder CEO of, I don't know how to pronounce this, man, Corvus Robotics? Corvus Robotics. That's right, Scott. That's not that bad. <laughs> no, it's not. Uh, so what, what, you're, you're a Northwestern guy, too, aren't you? Yes. Yes, more go cats. Yep. We just got this whole room full of cats. <laughs> go cats and a lion, I guess, whatever. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, we're continuing to joke with sponsors on the other side of the room who are giving us faces because we're not giving love to University of Illinois Champaign. Uh, but anyway, uh, I met you at Future Founders. Yes. And we had a nice little mentor-mentee session. Uh, I introduced you to, ironically enough, it just worked out this way. I introduced you to Dudley. I think you'd met him before, but reintroduced you to Dudley, Dudley Baylor. Yes. And uh, he was yeah. here today, which is kind of funny as a as, as a little random icon yeah, or ironic setup. Today. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I guess kind of catch me up on this. I know this is going to be the first time people are going to hear about what you work on, but catch me up on where you've where you've gone with with this drone system since we last talked. Yeah, um, thanks, Scott. So I'm Jackie Wu. I run Corvus Robotics. Corvus Robotics is a technology company that helps warehouses scan their barcodes uh, and their inventory using drones that fly without human piloting. So these are aerial drones that fly by, for example, after shift or after shutting down an aisle and they can uh, pick up the inventory, for example, through 1D and bar uh, 2D barcode scans, through RFID or 3D modeling. Uh, so what's pretty interesting is that we've got this working prototype and we've been testing and demoing in a few warehouses here in Chicagoland. Um, interesting fact, Chicagoland has the highest concentration of warehouses in America. Like, who knew, right? I didn't know that. Um, and uh, It's you know, surprising, but it's not. Yeah. It's one of those things, like, <laughs> I mean, I, I guess it makes sense, but, but yeah, you wouldn't really, like, you wouldn't think that you would waste... I guess, well, when you think about Illinois, Chicago land, because otherwise I would say like you wouldn't waste expensive real estate on warehouses. Right, right. I mean, these warehouses, you know, they're a quarter million to a million square feet, right? But they're in the middle of nowhere, right? Yeah. They're not in Chicago. They're, you know, in, in some suburb. And um, a lot of these Loves warehouses- Loves Park, right outside of Rockford. Right, yeah. I mean, half an hour from my house, there's, you know, a, a lot of these giant warehouses, million square feet and up. Um, and what's interesting is that these warehouse managers are super excited- uh, these they're super excited to be using this new technology in their warehouse because, you know, they can see they can show to the other warehouse managers like, hey, we've got drones. There's all this buzz about drones and we're, we're implementing them in our warehouse today. Um, so that's been really exciting for the uh, the folks that we've been working with so far. So when I first talked to you about this, I mean, you, you were pretty far along, but it was sort of in a testing phase. Uh, you're yeah. it seems like you're still in the testing phase ish. Right. Right, so we're, we're still in, uh, we've got a uh, proof of concept, so we've got a prototype that works, uh, but it's definitely not at the stage where, you know, it's a product that we're ready to just uh, hand out to people, right? So uh, we're physically going into these locations and doing, uh, you know, a, a, a demo with, the, uh, with a pipeline to go into paid pilots. So that's where we are right now. What, what, would, I guess, what got you into this? I know, like... I don't know. Yeah. It just seems like it's, this is one of those things where it's like, right. <laughs> I, like, now, like so. here's the thing, here's the little context on this. So, yeah, I, I would I would ask a normal person and say, why would you get into creating drones for boxes that are stacked a mile high in a warehouse? <laughs> and I would say that. But here's the here's the catch. Mm. If I said that right now to somebody, it makes sense. They're like, well, duh. Haven't you seen all the stuff going on with drones mm -hmm. and drone delivery and AWS and like. Amazon mm -hmm. everything else like it makes sense to start it now but you didn't just start this now you've been working on this for a while right and so my question now to you is like how did you see this as a growing opportunity right. and what brought you to try and, and solve it right well I started uh, in grad school in robotics at Northwestern um, Go and, cats. and back then uh, I mean drones have been kind of getting more popular in the past couple of years but they're almost all outdoors so, so these applications are for you know uh, outdoor construction inspection agriculture and so on uh, but nobody was doing it indoors because of a, of a technology difficulty that indoors there's no GPS. You need some sensors to help these drones navigate indoors. And so we looked at this vertical, right? We were seeing, uh, you know, American supply chain uh, and manufacturing sort of taking a uh, back seat to a lot of the sexy, cool Silicon Valley things, right? So a lot of our friends in, you know, software developers or in robotics, they're all going out to San Francisco and doing all these like sexy apps and so on. And we saw that uh, a lot of these traditional industries were being underserved. Um, very few people were working on things for warehousing and for the American supply chain and logistics industry. And that's something that we wanted to help change. 
Um, so we got around to creating this prototype and, and testing it out, you know, over the past couple months. And, uh, you know, we've been testing in warehouses pretty much every week. And uh, we finally have something that we're able to show people uh, to, to large warehouses and Fortune 500 companies with large warehouses who want to use this exciting new technology. So when Amazon scoops you guys up, you're going to remember that I was a mentor. Right? <laughs> of course, Scott. Of better course. not forget because I'm going to come back to some kind of crazy startup idea. And I expect you're going to be like, you know what? Whatever, man. <laughs> Checks are flowing. <laughs> no, this I, I say that because this is such a brilliant idea, really. I mean, the 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 space is can you imagine I mean you can't imagine that's why you built the company. Can mm -hmm. you imagine though as a as a listener, can you imagine every single facility, even Walmart, mm -hmm. not in, mm -hmm. in Amazon, the package, you know, the holding plants, the shipment plants, but even the stores themselves. Right. All of the shrinkage, all of the problems that they deal with at a Best Buy. I mean, Best Buys might not be around by the time this thing comes to market, but for right now, mm. all the shrinkage that they deal with, you've got a solution that at the end of the night doesn't cost you hourly workers that is really not infallible, but damn close. And right. we'll have data analytics after to say, I mean, the best part is not only can it do all of the all of the indexing of all the products and things like that, but it actually do a data analysis on its own usefulness. Exactly. Which is exactly. unbelievable. Exactly. And we're super excited. So for warehouses with pallet level or carton level items, um, this can be a game changer in terms of helping these warehouses know you know, nearly in real time, or at least every single day, what their inventory looks like, where it is, uh, and, you know, if there's any discrepancies. And these significantly decrease the cost of the annual physical inventories because they can conduct these cycle counts with a granularity that's, you know, one to two orders of magnitude higher than what they have right now. Um, and so um, for these warehouses, I mean, so it's it's only some warehouses that we can be in. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, some... Today. Right, today, yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe in the future we can develop better computer vision. But, for example, loose garments, that's not something we can do, right? Or, like, loose heads of produce or very small items um, in bins. Those aren't things that we can help. But for large warehouses with forklift accessible aisles and pallet or carton-level goods, I mean, these drones Which is can certainly, uh, certainly an actionable amount of, of market share. Yes, there's, there's, <laughs> a, there's a lot it's of these It's probably minimum 40 to 50% of the market share has got to be there's, that. Exactly. There's a lot of these guys, and we're really hoping that we can reach out. And, and help some of them with this new technology that we're developing. So uh, I have to ask, you know, at scale, not, not necessarily, but at scale, how do you envision this looking like? In my mind, you know, how I'm looking at like the B, no one's going to remember this. I forget that everyone's like a child now. But uh, <laughs> I, I think of the B in, uh, in Richie Rich with Macaulay Culkin. It's oh like this, God. do you remember this? I have no idea what that is. Nobody in this room does. That's fine. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's a me movie. Anyway, the B is like this big. Mm. And it just like buzzes around all of their places and takes like inventory on things. Wow. How big is this? Is this drone going to be? How much of a footprint and noticeable will this be? Will this be something like I'm I'm at work and I see this comes in, or is it like just sort of buzzing across the room and it's it's small and you know I guess at scale, what's your vision of this? How how big a footprint does something like this have at a plant? Yeah, certainly uh, it's not uh, so small that you know it's not going to be a bee size or a butterfly size. I mean. There was today. This episode, right, today. There's this episode of Black Mirror where they had these little bee drones. But um, the, the thing that constrains that is uh, is the larger the drone, basically, the more battery it can lift. Uh, yeah, uh, of course. Yeah. And so the, the stronger the, the uh, motors and so on. So our, so our drone is, you know, not huge, but it's, you know, two feet across and, uh, you know, you know uh, th thereabouts. So it's something that's noticeable. People aren't going to accidentally run into it, but it's also not so small that, uh, you know, it's, 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 you know, it's not trivial. Well, I mean, you know, those of us who are non-technical don't think of these things. We just assume it's magic. But uh, <laughs> anyway, this is incredibly cool. I'm glad that you have, you know, seems like you've had a lot of headway in this. You're still at it, which is more than most startup companies that I can that I meet with yeah. can, can say. Uh, you know, I guess what my last thing for you is like, where do you, you know, what's the ETA on something like this? When when do you think, uh, not just when do you think Bezos is going to pick up and buy your company, but like uh -huh. when when do you think that this is going to be? You're going to come back here to tell us like we're in, you know. 25 warehouses doing our thing right um so this year what's really exciting is that um we have a couple large uh, fortune 500 uh corporate clients that uh, want us to do these demos and and potential pilots um so we're trying to sign up uh, as much as we can handle doing um so there's still a few opportunities for this for uh through q2 and q3 um and you know who we're looking for are really the innovators, the the warehouses and the large companies that really want to adopt this new technology, right? So there's that innovators curve. It's like the front 2.5 percent are the true innovators. Then there's you know early adopters and 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 the majority of the folks who 
uh, you know, want a technology once, you know, everybody else has it. But we're really looking for the first, you know, most innovative companies who want to adopt the newest technology and see what this can do, the business case for it and the ROI for inventory scanning drones. Who's a company? Get name a company if you can. Who's one oh, you want? Well, we, well, we signed NDAs with them, so we're not supposed oh, to you can't name who they are. are. Yeah, oh. unfortunately. Come on. Sorry about that, no, Scott. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. You said what was the name of that company again? <laughs> just trying, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just trying to catch it. We would edit, we would edit it out anyway. <laughs> um, but anyway, this is really cool. Where do people go to learn more about it? Uh, Corvus-robotics.com. C-O-R-V-U-S-robotics.com. Jackie, this is great. Thank you so much. Thank you absolutely yeah. for coming in here. This is awesome. You can watch this episode and more at technori.com, download the podcast on iTunes, and stay connected by following us on Facebook and Twitter at Technori, or follow me at Katoon. Boom, that's a wrap.